Before we start our painting with these random materials, let's actually test the colors first to see how they're gonna turn out. Um, you might not have a paintbrush at home. Of course, I have lots of paintbrushes, which I'm gonna use, but let me give you some other suggestions for painting. You can always use a Q-tip. Um, you can use an old toothbrush, not your little sister's toothbrush, but an old tooth toothbrush no one is using anymore. Um, or maybe you have like a makeup brush or some kind of thing that again, no one's using anymore um, because you're gonna dip it in some smelly things. All right, so let's test one color at a time. Um, first we have the coffee. Um, I've used coffee for paintings before, believe it or not. So I'm gonna dip it in here, wipe some off, and then I'm just gonna brush it right across the word so we can kind of see what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off. Um, all right, so that's coffee. Um, this is red tea, which is one of my favorite teas. I first had it um, when visiting South Africa on a rock climbing trip. All right, so there's red tea. It's a tiny bit warmer than coffee. It looks like there's like a little bit more of a, a red or an orange tinge to it. And here's green tea. Okay, so I'm washing my brush, getting all the extra water out so it doesn't dilute the color. Um, green tea doesn't look very green, does it? It's going right, right over the green tea. And that's a pretty light color, isn't it? Has a little bit of a yellow green tinge to it. Um, again, we can always make these colors look brighter when we're painting with them um, by making multiple layers. So I'm drying my brush. This is black tea. This is kind of what people consider regular tea. Um, Wow, that one ended up really, 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 really light. I'm not sure why about that. I'm not really sure, I'm surprised. All right, here we have some juice. Um, again, guys, please ask before you use any of these materials in your kitchen. Um, we're all trying to conserve our groceries right now for sure, right? Um, I think this is like a blueberry cranberry juice or something. It has a slight pink tinge to it. Again, pretty light. Um, this is paprika. It says do not use cayenne because you know when we made all these colors, I added really hot water, almost boiling. Um, if you add boiling water to spicy like a chili, um, it could actually make um, like air that's unhealthy to breathe. It would burn you a little bit. So this is paprika. Notice it has some speckles in there. It's kind of cool. It's gonna be fun to use. All right, here's the smelliest of the group. Oh my gosh, I was excited to get those onion skins out today so I could stop smelling it. And here's the onion skin. And that is really faint. Now look how interesting, it looks really dark in the bowl and really light when it goes on the water. All right, and last but not least, we have grass and leaves. I don't think this one's gonna make a color, honestly. Nope, really light. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let these dry um, because sometimes materials look a little bit as different as they dry, and then we'll check back in and make a painting with them. Next, we're going to take those colors and create a landscape painting. You can see on the color chart on the right that I labeled two colors as the sky, crossed out leaves and grass because it was too light of a color, and numbered the rest from lightest to darkest. We're going to create something called atmospheric perspective. And what that simply means is the atmosphere makes objects in the distance look lighter or less saturated. Um, they start to fade into the distance. And as the layers of color come closer, they get darker and more detailed. What I'm going to do is paint each layer, let it dry, and then paint the next layer. Um, when you see the painting started, you'll notice that I've taken lots of water, painted in the sky with water, and then added the juice and the green tea together so the colors actually mingle together just a little bit. I kept those speckles in the sky from the paint. So here you see that painting has started already. The painting is very wet at the top. I am using watercolor paper, which helps it sit on top.
and as it dries I go for the next lightest I go for the lightest color which is the black tea I make it a little darker at the top um, and then dry it and then add a little bit of water before it's all the way dry just to blend so it doesn't have a dark line. And then I'm going in with the onion skin color, again painting another layer, making it a little darker toward the top, using plain water to fade it to the bottom so there's not a distinct line. Now next I used the red tea and made a mountain, um, another group of mountains. I kind of wish I would have made those a little lower so I could have still seen the beautiful mountains in the background. But again, it's getting darker. I'm using some regular water water to help it fade toward the foreground or the front of the painting and then I did go back and dab it with a little bit of color to make it darker. Sometimes I like to pick up my watercolor paintings to let the painting um, use gravity to travel down the paper. So next um, I've decided to mix paprika and coffee together because I really wanted an extra layer in there um, and that is what you've seen me create. And now I'm using coffee in the very closest foreground. I'm trying to make it as dark as possible, so I keep adding a little bit more. I'm dabbing it. And then I actually switch to a smaller brush. If you don't have one, you could um, use a Q-tip or maybe a tiny makeup brush. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail just to kind of show those trees in the very foreground. And again, I can see them in this layer more than the last layer because they're closer. Our eyes can see more color. The color is more saturated in the foreground. And also we can see a little bit more detail. You could put anything in yours. You could do a cityscape. Um, so you could do buildings instead. You could do animals in your foreground. You could do a house or a home anything at all, whatever your imagination um, tells you to paint. Um, you saw I made a little bit of a mistake there, so right there again I dabbed it with a paper towel um, just to take a little bit of the color back up. I let it dry a little bit and then put a little bit more coffee in there. And I'm just trying to finalize some of those details. And there it is, our landscape painting created with everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs>